What is going on YouTube? I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today is a big day. This is an oil change on my 718 Cayman S. This will apply to all the 982 chassis, uh, the base Cayman, the 718 Cayman S, which is this example here, and also the 2.5 liter GTS. This is famous for being a difficult oil change. The oil filter is in a very difficult spot and Porsche quoted like seven or $800, which is ridiculous. I assume that that's why you guys are here. You wanna save the seven or $800. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I'm by no means uh, a professional at this. I've done it one time before and this will be my second time. So take all the information I give you with a grain of salt. I'm just gonna be showing you guys what I do, how I do it, because I wish there was a video like this when I was trying to do it my first time. In the owner's manual, it says that you can use 0W40 in the winter, 5W40 or 5W50. So I'm gonna be sticking with the 5W40 and you're going to need six quarts of that. So in order for me to lift the car up, I will be using a tool called a quick jack. This is like a hydraulic system that will raise the car. So you'll also need one of these hockey puck looking things. This is special for Porsche. And so this is actually like a lock mechanism. So if you go down to the jack point underneath the car, right here where my finger is, you can fit this in only one direction. Once it fits in, you turn it. And so now it's locked into place. So you're gonna need one of those in order to lift the car up the correct way using the jack points. So now I've got the car jacked up and onto these race ramps. This is the first time I've ever used the race ramps. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I've been using these quick jacks for the long time and they lay on the side here. And so they limit your access from the side. So where you can only enter from the back or the front. So I highly recommend these race ramps. The first time using them, I feel safe. I don't feel claustrophobic and really open. These are the 12 inch race ramps. So it raises the car up by a foot. We're gonna get into taking the pan off. So I'm gonna roll under there. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. So once you get underneath the car, you're gonna have three of these nuts that's gonna come off. One here, one here, and one more over here on the edge. Sorry, four of them. I missed one. All these screws that are on the edge of the pan here, these are gonna require a Torx head, a size T25, and the screws look like this, and uh, they're all over the edge of the pan. So I'm gonna get these off and I'll get back with you guys. So I thought I was ready to pull the pan out, but these are connected to these under the car. So it looks like this piece on each side is going to have to come out too. This bolt is a 10 millimeter size, by the way. So you also have two more of those 10 millimeter bolts in these little holes up closer by the tab here. And I've already got this tab out, but it was a little tight and I realized that I forgot to take these out. So I remember that. So as you guys can see here, this pan is ready to come off. All right. All right, we got it. Here's what the pan looks like from the outside. Uh, it's a really good chance to clean up this velvet stuff. I think I'll take the time to do that. It's not often that you have the car on jacks, so uh, you don't really have many chances to clean it. So when it's off, it's a great time. I will do that before I put that back on. So now we've got access to the bottom of the oil pan. Here we are, right here. Here is the drain plug. One day I would love to get this changed, but uh, that is something for the future. The car's really cool. I mean, everything you look at, you see made in Germany. Come up here, made in Germany. Over here, made in Germany, made in Germany. Well, guys, it's almost like this is a German car. So I guess it's one of those things that a lot of you guys over in Europe probably wouldn't appreciate as much as I do here in America, but it's really cool to see as an imported European car, all these things that just, everything is just labeled made in Germany when you look under the car. So once you've located the drain plug, it will use an eight millimeter Allen wrench in order to get it off. I'm gonna let you guys watch me drain the oil from the pan. Yep, there we go. There you go. Cool stuff. Here, I'll get you a towel. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. The oil smells good though. That one's a little short a little too. Short. So I'm having to reuse this crushed sleeve, so I'm just gonna Sand it down, trying to, so I can just reuse it. So got a little more to go. Would Porsche recommend this? Mm, probably not. But does it work? 
Yeah. We've got all the oil out of it now. And so for those of you guys who need to change the filter, uh, I'm sorry, but in this video, I will not be changing the filter. The car's only got 3,000 miles since the last oil change. So I'm just gonna change the oil this time and leave the filter alone. The filter, guys, good luck. I had to take the driver's side rear wheel off to access it last time. It is back there. I mean, I don't even know. It's back there. I'm touching it way back. And I had to take the rear wheel off. There's surely a way that you can do it without having to take the rear wheel off. But this filter is just a pain. It's so difficult. And since there's only been 3,000 miles since the last oil change, I will be leaving that alone. That's what you came here for. I'm so sorry. I, I cannot help you. There is no easy way to get to this. If you're changing your oil filter too, good luck. I've now sanded down the crush washer and so it's ready to be put back on. This is not the Porsche recommended way. If you buy the kit, it'll actually come with another drain plug and another crush washer, both brand new, so that you do not have to do what I did. I did not buy the kit. I bought it once for the last oil change. It just kind of slipped my mind this time. So that's what I resorted to this time. So not the recommended way, but it does work if you're in a pinch. We've got the drain plug with the sanded washer. I would recommend you get a new washer with through the kit with Porsche. So let's push this used oil out the way. Got a paper towel, wipe off the remaining residue. I don't think it matters how long you leave it up there. It's, it'll just keep dripping, so. So it's ready to put the drain plug back in, just like that. I would just hand tighten it up until you can fit the Allen wrench on there. Just tighten it. All right, should be good. And as you guys can see, even with only 3,000 miles, the oil is pretty dark. It's definitely ready for an oil change. 3,000 miles, but this isn't my everyday driver. There are 3,000 pretty hard miles, so it's definitely ready. So now that we got the drain plug in, we are ready to fill this thing up with oil. So let's open up the rear trunk. Guys, look at this. Look how unfortunate. Just barely, it's so close. <sighs> but it's not gonna work. Do your best not to spill anything. This is carpet, so it'll absorb it all. So be careful when you're filling it up. But here's where you fill it up with oil. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. Last time I filled up the oil, I used a funnel right here. It looks like you're gonna be fine, but there's like an overfill, like right inside of here. And I actually spilled a bunch of oil and I never knew about it until I smelled it inside the car. So that was kind of a problem. So fill it up slow, make sure you don't spill it because even though it doesn't look like you're spilling it, if your like funnel is full, more than likely it's overflowing into these sides areas and it's just kind of hard to tell. So be careful. I seriously mean it guys. I mean, I've cleaned the pan a good bit now, but I mean, there was oil caked all over it. I just took off this panel and it's just caked in oil. So I'm going to spend some time cleaning it. I may have to take off a few more pans even. So uh, yeah, guys, a lot of extra work if you let it overflow and just drain onto your pan. So don't let that happen. Watch carefully, keep an eye on it, and don't let it overflow and make the same mistake I did. Learn from my mistake and don't let this happen to you. And because my trunk lid is too big and it'll hit the garage door, I'm actually gonna drop the car down after I put those panels back on and then fill up the oil. So I will show you guys after I put all the panel pieces back together and drop the car down. And I will show you guys me filling up the oil and how to check the oil levels inside using the LCD screen because there is no dipstick on this car. So you have to use the LCD screen. I'll show you guys step-by-step step how to do that, but I'm gonna put these two panels back on, drop the car, and I will be right back with you guys. So in case you guys have not been under a 718 Cayman before, this is the VGT turbo. And uh, so yeah, here's what it looks like. And here's the catalytic converter that it feeds into. So yeah, just thought that was cool. And I'd show you guys. Finally got the car back down. Got six quarts of oil. Now we're gonna fill it up. And here's where you fill it up. And like I said earlier, you know, don't let it go through the sides through between this black and the yellow. Just make sure it's going in there so you don't spill and have to clean up like I did. Yeah, and if you guys have something like this, this is gonna be your best bet so you don't spill anything. Nationwise, that was a company. Nationwise? Yeah, that was about 40 years ago. Made in America. Made in America. Yep, so we're gonna use this funnel, and I think you guys know how to 
pour something out of a bottle. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Bottles funnel into the oil hole. How, how long ago did you buy this? 40 years ago. 40 years ago? And look at that, you paid $3.99. I don't know if you guys can read that, but that's just unbelievable today. With the sticker still on With it. With the sticker still on it. That's hilarious. Just stick that right in there. All right, so we put in six quarts. So I'm going to show you guys how to measure it, and I'll show you guys what that looks like on the screen. So here is the moment of truth. We are going to turn her on. Let's see how what we got. Uh-oh, I think we gotta let it run for a little bit. So now it's actually the next day. I actually went out for a drive and got the engine warm and it still wouldn't read the measurements. So I just came home, my temperatures were fine, my oil pressure was fine. So I assumed it was in the okay range. How you actually get to this menu? So you actually use this right here to control your LCD screen. Here's like your typical page. So you're actually gonna click the button forward and you can actually get into more detail. And then right here is your oil measurement and you select it. This is the third time the car is being on and now it's finally reading, but my engine's not warm. So I'm gonna go for a little drive. So you guys might be wondering why, but the oil measurement said that it was unavailable. And to be honest, I don't have an answer for you. I will say that this happened the first time I changed the oil and it happened the second time. So don't be surprised if it happens to you so it took me three startup cycles. I actually went out for a drive the same day that the oil measurements were unavailable that you guys just saw. And so that night I went out for the drive, got my car up to temperature, drove it for about 15 minutes or so and came home uh, because I couldn't read it. Uh, I wasn't too worried about it because my oil temperatures and oil pressure were fine. About an hour later, I let the car idle for about a minute or two, still wouldn't read. So now it is the next morning went out for a drive, got the car warm, and finally I got the oil measurements to read. Now I was in the green zone. If that happens to you, do not panic. Just keep an eye on your oil temperature, keep an eye on your oil pressure, and as long as those are fine, you should be all right. So this happened to me the first time I changed the oil and the second time. This is more than likely a common occurrence in changing the oil. It probably takes time to settle. I don't know if this has something to do with the ECU where it has to start and cycle through uh, so many times before it gives you a measurement, but I'm not sure. And as long as you put six quarts of oil in, you should be within the okay range. And then you can make minor adjustments from there. So when the car is up to temperature, when you look at the screen, do you see the acceptable range, the bottom hash and the top hash? So that is approximately one quart, according to the owner's manual. Make your adjustments accordingly. So mine's like a little bit below half. So if I really want to top it off, I can probably put another half quart in, which I think I will do because the car is only going to consume more oil, not the other way around. So I'll probably put about a half quart in. So in order to set the date and mileage for the next oil change date and to get rid of the maintenance light, I'm gonna be using this multi-system scanner by Foxwell. And so this works with the Porsche by plugging into the OBD2 port. Although this is gonna be the unit that I'm using, I know that other systems work, but this works for me. And so I would recommend it, but if you guys know that uh, there's something better or you guys have another one, I think it'll work. But my explanation will be based on this scanner. Here is the Foxwell scanner outside of the box. And here is the OBD2 plug. And so in order to access the OBD2 plug, you're going to be needing this plug. We're going to be under the driver's side. It's right above the dead pedal. And you're going to plug into that to access the OBD2 port. So in the application, we're going to be selecting Porsche. And keep in mind that you're going to have to buy these licenses. So I have Porsche and BMW. We're going to select the car manually. We're going to be going down to the 718 Cayman. And it is the 982 chassis. So it's telling me to do a few steps. And one of them is to switch the ignition on. So I'm going to go get the key real quick. So once you plug in with the OBD2 port and select your vehicle, then you're gonna go in and choose the oil reset. And then you're gonna select reset maintenance interval, confirm it, and then you're gonna input the date. And then after you select the maintenance interval reset and you chose the date, then it will complete. And so now the system is reset. You won't get a warning light on your dash and your oil change is complete. 
and your ECU is up to date. So guys, that is how you change the oil on a 982 chassis Cayman. I hope you guys could save seven or $800 by doing this yourself. I hope you guys learned something in this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys found this video valuable. If you guys have something to teach me, please tell me down in the comments section. Or if you learned something from this video, please let me know what you learned down in the comments section. Please like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with this content and learn more from me and my 982 Cayman. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and you guys can save seven or $800 by changing your own oil on a 982 chassis Cayman.